Welcome to the Scottish Rite Journal podcast and audio excerpt of the Scottish Rite Journal, published by the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World. This week's article, The Purple of Our Fraternity, Caring for Our Material Culture, by Heather K. Calloway. It can be found in the May-June 2014 issue of the Scottish Rite Journal. Your ambitious feet may tread round after round the ladder that leads to fame in our mystic circle, and even the purple of our fraternity may rest upon your honored shoulders. That's from An Address to a Brother Upon the Presentation of a Lambskin Apron by the Lodge. Now picture, if you will, He's sitting in a barber's chair. He's adjusting his beard in a mirror. And the room is extremely busy. Lots of activity. You hear some rehearsing lines. Others trying on costumes, hoping to look like a historic figure in their period dress. You see one dressed as King Solomon. And here's another as Adoniram. Now, to an outsider, this would look like any other theatrical production. But for those in the know... Those guys backstage in wardrobe are yet another valley of the Scottish Rite. They're getting dressed for a degree to perform in their reunion. But it wasn't always this way. In the mid-19th century, the Scottish Rite didn't perform degrees on the stage. They were communicated. Yes, that means they were read aloud to a candidate, and after listening to a story, he had earned the degree. While fraternal rituals were mostly an oral tradition, communicated and passed down from one member to another. But with the changes that began to occur in theatrical productions and the new props available for the stage, fraternal groups began to incorporate stage effects into their rituals. Tracing boards were some of the first images used to teach ritual, portraying symbols and scenes from degrees. Following this, the magic lantern became what we would call a retro version of the modern-day PowerPoint slide. The slides were often made of glass, and the images projected onto a wall from a projector. Now, the ritual had been performed in the center of a lodge room in the past, in the late 1800s, now was suddenly moved to a stage. In the early 20th century, the Scottish Rite moved to a more theatrical production of their degrees. Instead of reading the ritual, they began enhancing the ceremony and performing it live on stage. Well, fraternal groups suddenly needed supplies in order to perform these new versions of the degrees in a theater-type setting. As the theatrical effects grew, so did the equipment that supported the degree work. Supply companies such as C.E. Ward, M.C. Lilly, and Henderson Ames created props and costumes to add to excitement of the stage performances. So what did these guys buy and how did they get it? Well, obviously there was no internet. You couldn't just Google costumes for a ritual and get 33,000 hits. So instead, salesmen traveled around the country with the catalogs of the items. Now, these catalogs were filled with props, costumes, and any imaginable item that could be used in a ritual performance. For instance... The C.E. Ward catalogs from the 40s and 50s featured aprons, jewels, hats, beards, shoes, minute record books, membership cards, lodge seals, working tools, an Ark of the Covenant, a gong, hoodwinks, altar Bibles, candidates' clothing, altar covers, candles, ballot boxes, gavels, lecture charts, rings, grave markers, the American flag, as well as literally hundreds of outfits possible to create the appearance of a mythical figure from the past. Some of the items, a majority of which are in that catalog, They're now the same items that are being donated to museums and archives for long-term preservation. Now, some are in quite fragile condition as they have been well-worn in degrees for the past 100 years. If your lodge or valley would like to preserve these items for display or for future use, this is what we recommend. 
If the item is cloth, a.k.a. textile, in the museum world, then note that this item is the most fragile of all types of artifacts. Now, most antique textiles are made of natural fibers that may include wool, cotton, linen, or silk. Now, you should keep the item away from light and temperature changes. If possible, keep in a flat file for archival purposes in an acid-free folder, box, or sleeve. Antique silk textiles, such as the Masonic aprons that were produced in the early 19th and 20th centuries, are often chemically unstable due to a process called weighting. Now, this process occurred when metallic salts were added to the silk to add weight and body to the fabric. Silk fabric, which has been treated with metallic salts containing iron and tin, is probably the most fragile textile. Now, at the House of the Temple, we store the Masonic and Scottish Rite aprons in an old map file drawer. It allows for multiple aprons and separate acid-free sleeves to be stored together in a dark, temperature-controlled room. If you want to display a costume on a mannequin or hanger, We recommend finding a duplicate costume to display because it will wear the fabric and the item will fade quickly in the light, particularly the red and purple costumes. Second, if a mannequin is impractical, we recommend using padded plastic hangers for historic costumes. Metal and wood hangers should be avoided as the fabric will stress wear and eventually tear. If you have a hat or fez that you'd like to display or store, use acid-free tissue. You can wad it up and stuff it inside, or cardstock to keep the shape. Now be sure to keep it out of light and in a controlled temperature environment. Fezes are often made of felt, a fabric made from wool. Wool can attract moths and carpet beetles, so take extra care when storing it. Keep felt hats in a cedar-lined box or drawer, if possible. Now, if you find pests on the felt, immerse the item in warm water for at least 10 minutes and it should kill them. How about other items? Well, we just received some leather belts with 14th degree buckles. The leather has already rotted, so it will likely need to be discarded. But the buckle just needs a soft cloth to dust it off. Don't use harsh chemicals or solvents on metals of any kind. Now, another item frequently found in collections is a sword. And believe it or not, swords are easily damaged. They readily stain and rust if handled carelessly. Polish with a soft cloth and remove fingerprints. Use gloves to handle if possible. Swords often come in a carrying bag made of cloth, plastic, or leather. Don't store the sword in the bag. It can cause damage depending upon what the bag is made from. Now, while preserving the history of the Scottish Rite has always been a priority for the House of the Temple Museum, they are actively working with valleys and blue lodges to help them preserve their Scottish Rite history, particularly regalia used for degree work. Beautiful Costumes Elaborate props and hand-painted backdrops were created for fraternal groups for over 150 years. And ritual supply companies flourished. But today, many Scottish Rite Valleys are moving to new locations, selling their old, larger buildings in favor of a multi-purpose space shared with other Masonic groups. They have also begun to change the way they conduct degree work and hold reunions. As valleys reevaluate their work, they have turned to the House of the Temple for assistance in the preservation of their materials. So, if your lodge or valley needs assistance in creating a plan for preservation, please let us know. Albert Pike claimed that the fourth degree was the first step toward the inner sanctuary and heart of the temple. Let's make sure we preserve the history of that temple. Now, don't forget, you can read the Scottish Rite Journal anytime by downloading the Scottish Rite Journal app, free now in your app store. The Scottish Rite Journal is published by the Supreme Council, Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction. 
The illustrious S. Brent Morris, 33rd Degree, Editor-in-Chief, Copyright 2018, All Rights Reserved. Any citations for this article can be found in the corresponding print edition of the Scottish Rite Journal. I'm your host, Bob Chase, 33rd Degree. Thanks for listening.